How's it going everybody? It's JDM Drifter and for today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Hot Wheels Redline Club membership Nissan Skyline GTR R34. So this is the newest Hot Wheels Redline Club membership car for 2020 as you can see right down there on the bottom. This is the 2020 club car. So to become a Redline Club member you have to buy the kit. This year it was $30. Usually they're about $25 so the price has gone up a bit but with the membership kit you'll become a member to be able to buy any car you want throughout the year if you can get lucky enough to get it on on the site also you get a collectible pen with the car on it and you also get a exclusive redline club membership patch so this year's redline club membership car was the nissan skyline gtr r34 and they did it in this really nice looking spectra flame purple this is not a color we see very often also if you don't know last year they used the nissan skyline gtr r34 with the opening hood and the regular redline club series here it is in the spectra flame blue and these were numbered as well. I have number 10,893 of 12,500. And if you don't know, the Redline Club membership cars are no longer numbered. The last time they were numbered was in 2018. Overall, these are the same cars, pretty much the same details. There's a few little differences and the wheels are painted on the purple one. But otherwise, it is pretty much just a reuse of this one. I have a feeling that they had the tool for this one out and they were already chromed, so they decided to reuse it for the membership and this is also the third release they have done of the r34 gtr with the opening hood the first one was the yellow los angeles convention release which i do not have and then the second was the blue regular rlc release and now the third which is the membership release i like the blue one better than the purple but i wish they would have actually painted the te37s on the blue one similar to like what they are on here and i'm also going to show these closer once i open this up as well I thought I would also bring out some of my other membership cars I have from the past two years. I've been a Redline Club member. So my first membership was in 2018 during their 50th anniversary, as you can see right there. And the membership car was the Datsun Bluebird 510 with the opening hood. I only got one membership that year. It was my first year for 2020 and 2019. I did get two memberships. This is a super nice car and it has these one-off wheels, which are some Redline inspired rims with an actual stretched rubber tire on it, which is super cool. I really like this piece. And this was the last year they were numbered as well. And I have number 16,000 and 67 of 17,500. I believe they've also increased production on membership cars now. I believe they might be up to 25, maybe even 30,000 if not more. Not exactly sure since they do not number them anymore, but I do have a feeling they have increased. Also, here's my 2019 membership card. This is the Custom Camaro. This is a 67 Camaro, and this tool is supposed to be a replica of the original Redline tool. This has the red interior, the plastic neoclassic rims, opening hood, you got the red stripe around the front, and this beautiful Spectre Flame Black. This car they had been reusing a lot as well. I think the membership cars are mostly reused castings, but at least with the dots and Bluebird, that's my only one with the opening hood. And I did get two of these and I did open one. I wish I would have made a video on it now. But I still do have that one. And I was able to get two of the purple Nissan Skyline GTR R34 memberships this year. So I will be keeping one in the package for myself. And I'll be opening this one up. And also after I open this up, I did bring out the other version of the R34 GTR, which is the non-opening hood versions. I brought out the premium Too Fast Too Furious release. And I also brought out my mainline Super Treasure Hunt version of the R34 GTR. So I will give you guys a better look of them after I open this up and I'll put everything on the turntable at the end of this video as well. So let's go ahead and take this out of the protector so you guys can get a better look at the car and I will show the packaging. Also the pen and the patch as well. Now on the one I'm keeping what I did is I just opened up the back to take the patch out. For my membership cars I keep I like to keep the pen with them so I'd like to put this pen on display as well. So let's go ahead and pop this completely out of the protector. And another thing I would like to mention about Hot Wheels protectors is ever since the blue R34 they did on the car just from last year, Mattel has been using way too small of protectors 
for their car around the corner area of them. So you're receiving your cars, as you can see here, with these smashed corners. The rest of the card is about perfect, but these corners are coming smashed due to the bottom of the protector here being a bit too small. I guess they really mass-produced protectors, and they were too small in the corners. And I know Mattel's gotten a lot of complaints on it as well, but they still haven't fixed them. And this is now probably the fourth car they've done since the blue skyline that has came with these bad corners. And it's getting to be really bad. I actually had to return my second blue R34 because the protector was so small it also tore my card as well and smashed corners. I know Mattel's definitely aware of this and a lot of people have had the same problem. Hopefully they will change that soon or make all their cars and acrylic display cases if they can't fix that. So here's the patch. I've already checked this out because I have one already up on my Redline Club shelf. So you have the blue and orange stripes as RLC 2020 and the Hot Wheels logo on top. And here is the pen that you get with it. So that's the picture of the R34 right there in the center. This is inspired by a, a vintage Redline pen, which I only have one of them. And it says Mattel Hot Wheels. And it comes in this little bag here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one up. Okay, so here's the little pen right here. It's actually made of metal, which is cool. And yeah, pretty much that's it. Little metal pen with the R34 on it and a patch that's included with the car. Get a close look at the R34 before I open it up. So definitely the nice Spectre Flame purple on the car. There it says 2020 Redline Club car with the chrome text. So here's the back of the card. We also have the scannable barcode back here as well. And I did hear that some of these accidentally got sent to store. So I guess they put this barcode on here for if that ever happened so you could actually purchase them in the store and then here's some information on the car back here if you'd like to pause that and read it so that's about it for the packaging so now i think it's time to open this up open it up straight out of the pack i am going to end up saving the card and then there also is a plastic piece they put behind it to hold it in place. And let's go ahead and check out this car. Wow, this looks really nice actually out of the package. I do think I like the blue better, but this purple is super clean on this car. So if you don't know how Mattel gets their Spectra Flame like this, is that what they do is they'll actually chrome the metal before they spray it. So then there's no imperfections on the body of the car. So when they spray it with the purple on top, the chrome will shine through from underneath. And this is a semi-transparent purple. From the chrome underneath, it'll make the Spectra Flame purple look really nice in chrome. So that's how this look is achieved from Mattel. I am disappointed with all the reuses that they've been doing recently. Like this is now the third color that they've done of this. This is only my second color since I don't have the Los Angeles one, but I would have rather had something different, another one of the R34. Even though I love the car, I'd rather see a release like this, you know, maybe a year or so from now not only a couple months away from when they made the blue one. And also, this is something that they did say on the back of the card as well. So if you look at the back of the card, it says the MNP license plate. So if you look at the license plate on the R34, it says MNP. Now, what they're meaning by that is Midnight Purple. So I'm going to throw a picture up on the screen of what a real Midnight Purple R34 looks like. So as you can see, it has a color shift kind of paint to it on the real Midnight Purple R34. This is just Spectre Flame Purple on top of the chrome. This is not a color shift kind of paint. So I would have liked it if they would have not put that on the license plate because that's giving out false information and what this actually is. Now, I've also done a custom of a R34 GTR. This is actually a Motor Max die cast. And I sprayed this and some testers color shift paint. This rolls really nice. I've got it all stanced and detailed. This is actually a left-hand drive R34. This is an actual Midnight Purple Custom R34. It's actually in a real color shift like the real car is. And Mattel has color shift paint. They've only used it once before, which was last year. And they did it on this custom 72 dots and 240Z. This is the Rocket Bunny 240Z with the opening hood. I don't have a second version of this, but this is actually a color shift paint. So Mattel has color shift paint, but I guess it cost them more something to use or they wanted it to only be used on one car ever because it would have been a lot nicer actually, even though this purple is really nice and a rare color for them to use, it would have been a lot nicer if they would have done it in the real midnight purple and then that license plate would have been okay. 
So let's go ahead and get an up close look at this. As you can see, it does have a opening hood and there is the RB26 underneath the hood. And the hood, let's see how good it closes here. So the hood actually closes really tight. And even if you tap the bottom of the car, flip it over, it is not going to open. But I'm wondering how hard is this now to open back up? And that's one thing Mattel's been doing recently with their opening parts. Same with the RWB I just reviewed. It's hard to actually open the parts after you put them down. So now, as you can see, I've closed the hood and I cannot get it back open. So I was able to actually pop the hood back open, but you have to carefully pry the hood. And... Yeah, the engine is super nicely detailed, and I'm not sure if that's a decal on that or if it's actually paint detailed. Not exactly sure on that. And the way the hinge is designed, too, I've seen on people that have drilled it, it's like tucks underneath the dash. Really nice hinge design. But it's like their hinge is really good, and it'll actually stay closed and stay opened, but it's just how hard it is to actually open the stuff back up. You always have to be very careful to pry the parts back open. I think I'm going to end up just closing the hood and not opening it again. So that's it for the engine, and I'm probably going to just keep the hood shut now. This also has the TE37 six spokes on it. So at least they actually painted these rims. These are in a chromish green color, actually. You can kind of get a little bit of green. It doesn't really pick it up on camera, but off camera, they kind of have a little bit of green to them. Actually, the rims kind of remind me of the Millennium Jade R34, but these kind of are like gunmetal. I'm not really sure, because if you look at the chrome TE37s on the Too Fast, Too Furious R34, camera barely picks it up, but there is a slight difference in them. They do have this all detailed, the taillights, the headlights, the grill, all that, the turn signals, the GTR logo, the Nissan logo, the interior has got the speakers and silver in the back, they have the seat belts done in red, everything is detailed up on this, and this came out really cool. Also the orange on the exhaust, I'm not exactly sure why they did that, but I do like the silver details, and nice matte black base, and like it a lot better than a chrome base. So really nice details and everything on this. It rolls really good. Pretty heavy car as well for being all metal. The TE37s look really good on this, but I would have liked the car a lot better in a nice color shift. I think the Spectre Flame blue was kind of inspired by the Bayside blue R34, but I think it would also have been cool to actually do, thinking of the way the color of the rims look, and a nice Millennium Jade R34 would have been pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the turntable, and then I am going to compare it to my other R34s that I brought out without the opening hood. Okay, so now it's time to go and compare it to my other R34s I've brought out. Now, this is the original tool of the R34 GTR without the opening hood, and the casting is pretty similar from what I can tell. Just the hood now cut out, and you can actually see the RB26. Here is the Too Fast, Too Furious, Fast and Furious Premium release of the R34 GTR. This car is about a year old now, and if you look at the base, they look to be very similar. They're both even sprayed in a matte black. The matte black looks a lot cleaner on the RLC release. Also, no exhaust detail. Same TE37s. They're just regular chrome on the Fast and Furious and the kind of gunmetal color on the Redline Club release. They are both detailed in the front. Here's the first main difference I see on these. If you look at the front on the Fast and Furious R34, you see that the grills are a part of the base and the details are onto the base. Well, on the new RLC release, the grill details are onto the body, not a part of the base. The interiors look to be pretty similar, actually exactly the same. Also, another difference here is the metal wing on the RLC release is a separate piece than on the premium Fast and Furious. Otherwise, the casting seems to be exactly the same. The exhaust is a bit different. And that's about it. So otherwise, pretty similar casting. Just the grill, the hood, and the wing are the main differences. Now here is my mainline Super. Obviously, this one doesn't have a metal base. This is the Super Treasure Hunt from 2019. This is an Spectre Flame Green. But as you can tell, it is just sprayed over the bare zinc. It is not chromed like this. So here's Chrome Spectre Flame, and here's regular Super Treasure Hunt Spectre Flame. And it is the same tool for the body, interior, and everything as the Premium besides no metal base just thought i'd bring this out this only has taillight detail nothing in the front the fast and furious one has everything so i'm going to go and put those two on the turntable as well and then i think that's going to be about it for today's video
Okay, well, that's about it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, and subscribe. Check out my other most recent video I've done on the RLC RWB Porsche. I'm also going to be having my RLC Lamborghini Countach show up soon, so I will be reviewing it as well. Also, if you're not following my Instagram, it's, it's JDM Drifter. I'll put it in the description. I also didn't bring out my customs of the R34 GTR, the regular version without the opening hood in this video. I just wanted to kind of show the differences in the casting, but anytime there's a new R34 or whatever release, I'll bring out, you know, my favorite releases and my customs I've done. I've done some really cool customs with that one, and I have a lot more. I'm actually working on right now of the R34 GTR. Again, that's about it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.